the evaluation of Ryan Poles from higher to now, to pre-second draft, right? It could have started off on a really bad foot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he kind of got lucky with the Larry Ogunjobi thing. The Bears had offered him, I believe, $40 million over three years. I'm not sure what the one-year prove-it deal was for the Steelers, but they did just re-sign him for three years for $28 million. So even so, he still mm -hmm. heard his stock, and at the end of the day, is worth less than we were going to give him. After that, I think it's been pretty positive. So, you know, it's kind of funny. He avoided that initial stumble. That first GM excitement move, it was kind of taken out of his hands, which I've always, that's that's how I always looked at that. And every GM, when they come in, they want to make, like, that first splash move. And then they may regret it, they may not, but they always try to make it. And for Ryan Poles, it was Larry Ogunjobi. There's no debate on that. And ever since then, it's always been just, like, Smart, stable moves. Yeah, it's just kind of like, wait a second. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Let me just chill out. And then Roquan Smith comes in demanding a contract, requesting mm -hmm. a trade. It's just like, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. Right, exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. Yeah. I guess the questionable thing next would be Chase Claypool. Yeah. I think before Chase Claypool, Valus Jones Jr. might be the biggest speed bump. There you go, yeah. So between Larry Ogunjobi, I think, it, it depends on who you ask, I think the Roquan Smith move was the right move. I think it was the right Some move. Some people might call that his third big mistake. But the funny thing is, is we're holding him to a... We're holding him to, like, a GM standard as if this was a GM of the best team in the league. Like, I don't think... I don't think any other team's GM... Howie Roseman isn't held to this standard, and Howie Roseman has the best constructed team in the NFL. Right. So Howie Roseman goes into Philly and definitely has a lot of misses too. Devontae Smith over Justin Jefferson is the big one. Oh, yeah, There's a video true. of the Vikings uh, staff laughing as Devontae Smith gets picked and they just high-five each other and say, well, then I guess we'll take Justin Jefferson. Thanks a lot. And so, Howie Roseman being the best GM in the league, pretty much, un almost undisputably, I think makes a bunch of misses. And Ryan Pohl's largest yeah. mistakes is a third-round pick, a missed contract, and now doing what everyone wanted him to do, which was last year, go get Justin Fields a new weapon, or a friend, or somebody to help him. And who else was there? DJ Moore was t kind of, sort of available, apparently, last well, year. Well, the Packers offered a first-round pick for DJ Moore, and it got declined. And you got to think that that's probably a mid-first-round pick. And so, in Carolina's mind, he was valued higher than a mid-first-round pick this year. That's why that's such a great draft trade steal, because essentially yeah. you got that second first-round pick. The reason why I'm willing to kind of look past the Valus Jones Jr. thing, he saw the rookie contract, jury's still out, and when you look at the picks around him, I mean, you look at the first two, you know, Kyler Gordon had a rough start, but he's panning out. Jaquan Brisker's a legit pick. Then you have Felix Jones Jr., but then even after that, you wind up hitting with Braxton Jones. and Maybe you know, Doug Kramer. And yeah, exactly. Tommy so, Robinson's a good bench player. Right, right, right. So, essentially, it wasn't a bad draft. I mean, but that is every single draft you're going to have bad picks, and if your bad picks still just a question moving forward, yeah. it, it, it could still pan out. Um it's not the worst thing, so I, th I think a lot of people have a problem with the Chase Claypool thing, but... Again, I'm, I'm being nitpicky here. I added that point as the maybe speed bump in between, right? Larry Ogunjobi might have been the first mistake, but again, if he was healthy, is it a mistake? We don't know. It's a fork-in-the-road moments, right? And then Valus Jones Jr., it's a third-round pick. You can't criticize a third-round pick overly hard, and then... Again, he could be decent. He, right. His biggest mistake this year was being hurt way too much. Right. Right, like a hamstring injury and then mental issues. Doesn't mean he's physically not a good player. It's just more mental and then a health issue with this guy if he doesn't pan out. Which is, again, it's part of the GM process. But then the clay pool thing, yeah, it's a speed bump. But what were you supposed to do? Because it, it was 100% a fork in the road of he's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't. If he gets Claypool and he works out, you look like a genius. If you don't get anybody, you're getting absolutely destroyed for 10 more games that year for not trying to get Justin Fields some help. And then 
this is the only option in between where you did get him he is mediocre but there's still potential hope so you can't the guy was stuck could you imagine trading your first round pick for aj brown could you imagine that and having having them get a first overall pick at the end of the day like what other options really are there when you look at some of these guys i guess you know i know you point out calvin really all the time which that might be the one that kind of lingers out because he went for like a fourth and fifth condition. Just a fifth. Just a fifth. Okay, well, there you Maybe go. Maybe a so, sixth condition. However, as far as what you had to give up for guys <clears throat> versus the potential of them, like, uh, you know, Devontae Adams went for two first round picks. Tyreek Hill went for two first round picks. Mm-hmm. AJ Brown's gone for a first round pick. Um, th- there's a couple others that are escaping me. I, I can look it up, but, you know, it's really. Giving up a second round pick for a guy that's still in the contract. And mind you, at the same swing of the bat, you trade Roquan away. So it's almost like just dropping back 20 picks Breaking in the even. second round. It did band aid a hole, at least for a little bit. And yeah, you're right. You, you know, situation kind of forced the hand. I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of like a lose lose. It's a difficult situation to be in. But I think they kind of addressed it the best they could. I, I don't see, you know, if you. Yeah, you go for somebody better, you're, wait, you're spending more capital. You go for somebody worse, they don't make as much of a difference. Because everybody's hung up about last year. It's not about last year. It's about this year now. Yeah. Like, it's about Chase Claypool doing something this year. Well, the, the other right? thing is, you make that trade. You never trade away a second-round pick assuming that they do very little or make you worse. So, you trade a second-round pick when you're 4-3 and three, or 3-4, three and four, and then you assume, if you trade a second-round pick, that makes you a better team the draft pick is higher or the draft pick is lower because your record is better and so you're not saying i'm giving away the 32nd pick you give away a pick chase claypool makes you better and now it's the 45th pick this deal doesn't get absolutely destroyed all the time if claypool just performs 30 percent better gives you six touchdowns 600 yards and then you're already saying you're drafting at 45 so You traded the 45th pick for Chase Claypool, who is better. I get it, but even like you said, this year, you have Chase Claypool on the roster. If you had gone into this year with Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore, now we are talking about who do you spend that second round pick on, a receiver anyway. Right. You're not going into this year with DJ Moore and Darnell Mooney, and I'm good. So you're spending a second round pick on a receiver, which is going to be a rookie. So is any rookie going to be better than Chase Claypool at... 35, 40, 45. I mean, so, maybe, potentially, but at the same time... The um, risk is worth it. Yeah, I, I don't think Chase Claypool's <clears throat> beyond fixing this. So I think the next thing you look at is going into free agency. And right away, you sit there and uh, you're in the best situation than anybody else. Not only do you have the first draft pick overall, but... Cap-wise, you have so much money to spend and everything like that. And what's the first thing they say is, yeah, this is going to be a multi- multiple-year thing, right? So right away, let's take it slow, let's take it steady. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Listen, fans, like, yeah, we got it. We're not going to spend all of it in one place. So, And you sit there, and I think the two pickups that you do get with TJ Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds, are, those are worth the money. Right, and then beyond that, it's just like value signing, value signing, value signing. Listen, um, I'm excited for Green, I'm excited for Billings, I'm excited for some of these guys that are kind of in a prove it situation a little bit, and and that's fine, I'm fine with that. And because they're getting paid prove it money, they're not getting paid this. Like, you didn't go out there and pull a a Lamar Houston type Hmm. of deal where you just pay a guy 40 million dollars just because, you know what I mean, or Pernell McPhee and sit there and like, so he's not digging any kind of hole. He's just sitting there and adding depth to this roster. And I think for a young GM, I think it's, uh, it's, he, he's made a lot of very careful, smart, calculated moves. 